Ms. Sandilau. Good morning, Chairman Catania. My name is Judith Sandilau. I'm the Executive Director of the Children's Law Center. I'm testifying today on behalf of the Children's Law Center. Every year we represent approximately 1,000 low-income children and families. The children we serve, as you know, have some of the most significant and complex mental health needs in the district. I want to join the prior witnesses in applauding the direction that the committee and the, council and, um, the Department of Mental Health are taking. They're going in the right direction and they're moving faster than they've moved before. Um, however, with this grim budget reality, um, I think spe specifically in the area of children's mental health, um, we're not moving fast enough. And I want to propose through my testimony why that's so important and why we need to fill the gap this year with some local dollars um, while we build the bridge to a, a more robust system. Um, as Ms. Paul testified, the worsening economy is only going to increase the need for the limited services we have. CFSA is already seeing a dramatic rise in abuse and neglect hotline calls. According to CFSA's acting director, Director Roach K. Gerald, many of these cases are more severe in nature, an observation supported by evidence that emergency rooms are treating more children with burns and broken bones. As you know, quickly addressing trauma and behavioral problems leads to much better outcomes for children, but it also leads to cost savings. This cost savings isn't simply about future savings. Lower cost community services will prevent children from being placed in residential treatment facilities in fiscal year 2010, saving tens of thousand dollars per child. It will also allow children in foster care to remain with their foster parents rather than being placed in more expensive group homes, also saving tens of thousands of dollars in fiscal year 2010. It will allow children to remain with their birth families rather than coming to, into foster care, again, saving money in fiscal year 10. For all of these reasons, the DMH budget must include additional dollars for children's mental health this fiscal year. The good news is that there is additional revenue to fund this budget increase. Some of it comes from the district's quite laudable work this year to increase revenue and improve Medicaid. The budget already includes some of that revenue, but there are a myriad of other improvements to Medicaid that DMH and the Department of Healthcare Finance are poised to implement, which will increase revenue this coming year. Although these, fisc these fixes are not enough to fund the need in, in fiscal year 10, there are funds that DMH will receive that are not reflected in the budget. The budget anticipates a 70% federal Medicaid match. Now that the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act has passed, we know that the match will be 76.2%, an additional 6.2 cents for every dollar spent, or as I calculated, at least $1.9 million, million. These additional funds should remain in the Department of Mental Health and should be used to expand the array of services for children. We've neglected children's mental health for too long, and now that we are facing a crisis for the district's poorest families in the sinking economy, the services aren't there to catch D.C.'s children and families as they fall. We urge you to increase the funding for DMH budget by at least the additional $1.8 million expected from the Recovery Act. We also urge you to request DMH to provide you with information about the actual cost of serving all children with mental health needs. So that you allow, I'm sorry, I'm going okay. I'm to, I'll ask you some questions, Absolutely. but I, I'm trying to keep, uh, you know, the rule relatively no intact. Okay.